Okay, thanks for uh, speakers and participants. On behalf of Ujeri, uh, I have to uh, express my sincere appreciation to all participants here today. And I think I'm the uh, last speaker of the first session. And after my presentation, we'll have 15 minutes break instead of 30 minutes break for uh, smoother operation of the symposium. So please keep that in mind. And I'm going to start with my presentation of the first slide here. The presentation is titled Resilience Towards a Workable Concept of Sustainability. So I found very interesting common interest with all speakers here today. And I think we have a possibility to move on future research after this symposium. So I'm Okay, we live in a world that changes every single time, every second, every minute. As you can recognize from this picture, some changes we are recognizable, but we don't even we don't even realize some changes like melting glaciers. If you look at the picture uh, taken 1880, there's uh, there's glaciers, people taking with pictures, but after 100 years, the lake, I mean, the glacier became lake. So we don't even realize that happening because the time period of melting glacier is over our lifespan. But sometimes we can very easily recognize the changes, environmental changes, like a forest fire or typhoon or tsunami. In year 2017, there are a lot of disasters in, in the, around us, like uh, Hurricane Irma in North America, drought and poverty in Africa. We experience a lot of floodings in South Asia and earthquake in Mexico, then why this happens and what people can do for this. We developed about 25 years a term sustainable development, but semantically these words are con mutually con ex exclusive because sustainability and development have different orientation. But we developed this word contradictory term, sustainable development, and we have two faces like two different sides of queens. Good people and cunning people, good human and cunning human. We developed term social, economic, environmental sustainability, but on the other hand, uh, based on that concept, we develop more social growth, economic growth, and environmental degradations. So people have to ask to ourselves, is our world really sustainable? And the answer will be no. So what's next? Our next step is going to find another concept for sustainability, that is resilience. We believe equilibrium state is the optimal system in the sustainable framework we developed. But in the real world, there are probably multi-equilibrium state may exist. So optimizing system doesn't, doesn't fit with the real world. This is an example of ROC. If you look at the picture, 1960, there's a huge lake. It's over 110 times bigger than city of Seoul area. It used to be, actually. And people construct a dam for irrigation. And now it's, it looks like this on the right side of the picture. Saline desertification is on progress rapidly. Let's look at another example. It's Australia. There was forest with vernacular vegetation, deep rooted, but uh, we had uh, low ground water level and fertile soils. But people also construct dams for irrigation and toils characteristics of totally changed. And uh, salty soils cover this area and this is no longer available for vegetations. Then we have to find an answer how to restore, how to recover those areas with new concept, resilience. In a simplest term, resilience is to move from undesired system to desired system. 
So I want to refine resilience with three different kinds of comprehensive meanings. The first one is resistance. Resistance is the ability to return to the original form of stay or stay in current condition. The second comprehensive meaning of resilience is adaptation. Adaptation is the ability to absorb unexpected disturbances. The third meaning is transformation, the ability to reorganize the system. So we use these three different perspectives on resilience to approach uh, the real the problem. This is the uh, definition we found uh, through the literature review and all those uh, related I mean, research. And we define resilience is the capacity of a social ecological system to observe or withstand the perturbations and other stressors such that the system remains within the same regime, essentially maintaining its structure and function. The key is we have to remain its stru original structure and function. Under the uh, practical uh, meaning of the resilience, we try to apply those meanings to all the other research areas in this. Uh, and uh, I wanna uh, try, I try to find the uh, original term sustainability and the dif difference with resilience. The original term sustainability pursue single equilibrium with focus on problem solving instead of providing strategic and reasonable alternatives like resilience pursues. In resilience, instead of single equilibrium of sustainability, we try to find a multi-equilibrium in the real, to solve the real problem. So sustainability focused on durability and safety while resilience focused on dynamics of a system. That's the main difference and main idea of resilience in the real in the real world. So resilience and sustainability is complementary, so they have to support each other. So on the, that term, we have to provide uh, the practical tool of sustainability from the science of resilience. Uh, this is a graph from Web of Science, how study about resilience is increasing Mm, after 21st century. There's drastic changes about the resilience studies in Web of Science. And the main center of resilience is Stockholm Regional Center, like we talked about uh, this center this morning with the speakers. And they hold three, I mean, uh, tri-annual symposium. The first symposium was held in uh, 2008, and mainly the first symposium, they focused on holding definition about resilience, and they care about natural science instead of others. However, the focus area has moved to another uh, area of the world and another interest of the science. The second conference on, in 2011, they covered disaster and interdisciplinary approach to developed countries. And the third conference, they expanded their interest to poverty and environment, and they cooperate with the UN, and they are in their interest to cover developing countries. And the first conference in 2017, they uh, construct a kind of concrete system of a social environment, I mean, social ecological system as a, I mean, area of their interest, and sustainability, I mean, uh, resilience is a practical tool for sustainability and they expanded their interest to a global scale. So, with a catch price of think globally and act locally, global and regional and local should be linked all together because top-down or bottom-up method is no longer available to resolve the real-world problem. So let's take a look for a global activity to resolve these problems. Many well-known international agencies and institutions like UNDP, UNEP, or ECLA use uh, the term resilience to make their agenda, like building resilience, enhancing climate resilience, or poverty, health, and resilience in the Sendai framework, or resilient city agenda. In a national-wide or regional wide, like Dr. Chizu presented earlier, uh, Rockefeller Foundation 
selected 100 resilient cities in the world. Seoul, city of Seoul is one of the city and they found Seoul has all the great infrastructure and uh, uh, under the risk of cyber terror and landslide disease and all the pop I mean decrease of population. So we have to adapt the resilience concept to resolve these problems. Uh, in terms of local activity, they suggested four different activities for local activity to connect with the global and regional scale of activities. First one is building governance, and second one is resilience forum, and the third is education for lay people, and the first one is construction of a database for resilience network. As I told you earlier, it's, it shouldn't be monologue, it should be dialogue. So we have to communicate each other, the, uh, the, I mean, no matter what kind of scale, in terms of a global, regional, or local scale. So based on the active uh, conversation among those groups, resilience should be improved. And this is how I approach to resilience. Uh, I have educated as a landscape architect for my bachelor's degree, and I studied the landscape design and ecology for my master's, and I did my PhD for social science. So I tried to integrate all those different academic backgrounds, uh, and as a designer or a landscape architect, I tried to resolve those prob problems with uh, visualizing and assessing or evaluating and constructing a green infrastructure in the real world. And what I called for my approach is translational research. That is, uh, I use academic discoveries or uh, scientific data into design practice. So I have to uh, cooperate with you guys like a scientist. And I got those data sets and to improve my design work. Uh, this is two kind of opposite example of how people work with or against with nature. The first slide shows how people working in opposition to nature. If we have a disaster from nature, the first trial of people is to build great infrastructure like dam dikes to prevent disaster. But this is not all. This, this, work, this works in some phases, but if you have uh, unexpected or larger dis disturbances from nature, Mm, this no longer works. So we have to develop great infrastructures, more has more flexibility and new multi solution as a new multi solutions to prove I mean to provide resilience in our social ecological system. Uh, this is a diagram for my research, uh, like uh, park, artificial wetlands, rain garden, urban forest. This we call the green infrastructure. Green infrastructure can provide a natural ecosystem, the network to us. That's what we call the ecosystem service. If we have ecosystem service from ecological system to social system, human well-being and quality of life of the community members will be increased. So I has a concept of adaptive cycle of this feedback between ecological system and social system to improve resilience of our community. Mm, this is my uh, laboratory research theme. I'm interested in three different kinds of research theme, including uh, aquatic landscapes, such as wetland or streams, and urban area and coastal area. Based on these three research theme, I have three different research streams. The one is resilient green infrastructure design. The second one is resilience assessment. The third one is resilient strategy. I'm gonna talk about, about a little bit about this more in detail with uh, some examples. This is kind of spreadsheet uh, I worked on so far, and this matrix shows uh, three different dimensions in the real world problem, ecological, social, and economic. And I worked on several different scales, like uh, from uh, extra small, small, medium to large, to extra large. And this is a, a successful example of how people improve their resilience from Hurricane Sandy in New York. This is not my work, but uh, I think this is a good example to express uh, how resilience design uh, is uh, tangible in, in the real world. So they 
select four terms like resist, discharge, and store, and delay for to treat uh, rainwaters and stormwaters from hurricane. And try, they try to uh, input these ideas into design process, and they uh, designed park, green roof, and bioswale for green infrastructure to improve their resilience in the city area. And this is my work done uh, a few years ago. And I tried to find the flood vulnerable areas in Seoul area uh, to select a site for green infrastructures. And I want to design green infrastructure to improve urban resilience against the floods. So I use overlay method using GIS. And I analyzed and evaluated all those different information using geographic information systems like slope and uh, forest area, open spaces, park, streams, uh, all around the Seoul. And I selected three areas and three different scales, so small, medium, large. Then I suggested the solution, I mean, southern area of a river is the most vulnerable area against the floods. And I designed the disaster prevention park uh, for, as a green infrastructure to reserve, I mean, to improve resilience in that area. This is another work. Uh, I proposed the green infrastructure design concept centered on the floods according to scale and resilience characteristics. Uh, this is work done by one of my students. Uh, she drew beautiful picture, I mean beautiful drawings, uh, uh, several different kinds of green infrastructure diagram. So in dry season, flood season, they, they can uh, compare two different ideas and two different functionality of green infrastructures. And using four R concepts of resilience, including robustness, rapidity, uh, redundancy, and resourcefulness, uh, she developed good uh, green infrastructure concept drawings uh, that we can apply to all different kinds of scale, all different kinds of city areas where they needed. So at a small scale, stormwater management system like LID facility or rain garden can be useful uh, f uh, to resolve those problems in city area, or at a larger scale, the patchwork of natural areas that can provide habitat, flood protection, <coughs> cleaner energy or cle cleaner water um, should be applied to larger areas. Uh, this is artificial wetland I designed and constructed on the rooftop of an uh, elementary school building a few years ago. Uh, the purpose of this research is to develop modular wetland construction technology, which makes a sponge city, which absorbs, store, leak, and purified rainwaters. Like, like uh, Dr. Zhu pronoun I mean, uh, stressed about the sponge city concept, uh, this little endeavor will make a good starting point of sponge city concept. And from uh, for this uh, work, I developed uh, several ecological engineering systems and got patent for this study. And green infrastructure technique contribute to a positive urban water cycle. Uh, at the same time, sustainable water management impro will improve urban resilience to flooding. This is the second research stream of my laboratory, and the second. Uh, stream is resilience assessment, how I can resilience assessment uh, and what kind of process I need to re assess the resilience in urban area or coastal area or aquatic landscape where I have more uh, interest in my research concept. So if we want to develop acting, um, assessment of resilience concept, uh, there is uh, adaptive planning process that should be uh, uh, adapted then we understand the system, then we can identify interaction between social system and ecological system. Then we can analyze systems dynamics. In, in other words, the dynamics between social system and ecological system. Then we can construct a resilient system for a certain area, including urban, peri-urban, or rural area. Uh, this is the process of adaptive planning process and for resilience assessment. Mm. And this is work done uh, a couple of years ago about uh, how we build, I mean, assess resilience in spatial settings. Uh, spatial resilience mapping process uh, 
has done for this project, we use the GIS geography information system to evaluate the spatial resilience to prioritize areas for ecological restoration. So uh, same, same method, overlay method, we developed uh, different theme maps uh, like uh, ecosystem status index, topographic map, climate sensitivity map, and habitat fragmentation. And we evaluate, analyzed, and synthesized for all those maps to produce resilience assessment, assessment map in southern part of the Korea. There's a Upu wetland, which is designated by Lamsar. And that area has very confliction and problems between social system and ecological system. So we provide a solution for how to improve resilience of social system and ecological system. So the spatial resilience was calculated by four indices, including uh, those four uh, thematic maps and the area uh, around the Upo wetland was selected for uh, priority area for ecological restoration. This is another study uh, I've done a few years ago. Mm, ecosystem service and resilience assessment in Shinduri area. This is uh, designated by uh, Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Culture Heritage, I mean National Heritage as a, a very important area. But what I found interesting is this area uh, is sold out. I, what I mean by that is uh, two days ago, a bank made a successful bid on that area, 250,000 US dollars. Uh, so it's sold out. I don't know the story behind it, but uh, it's probably private land from now on. Anyway, to assess the resilience of ecosystem service value for a sustainable coastal land use planning, we calculate all those equations and numbers and we ran uh, computer modeling systems. So we pro produced four different scenarios, basic scenario and coastal dune forests restoration scenario. And third one is we restore, I mean restore grass field. And the first scenario was uh, coastal dune restoration scenarios. Based on the several runnings and calculations and we uh, fixed the model and the, the first scenario, coastal dune restoration scenario was very successful for this area for restoration. And this is the study result, and we published this to a prestigious journal a few years ago. And this is a uh, approach how I use concepts of resilience, adaptation, and transformation in design practice. So there is four actually determinants of adaptability. Uh, I'm not going to read over all of this, but uh, basically. Uh, we can move one threshold to uh, adapt uh, problems. And another one is transformation strategy. There will be bridges and barriers for transformation. So basically from undesired state to desired state concept is transformation. And I use those two different activities on my design practice. And this is another study uh, to evaluate the ability of a green infrastructure to improve resilience using four R's. Like uh, I said earlier, redundancy, rapidity, uh, robustness, and resourcefulness can be uh, applied to this project. This is actually ongoing projects. I'm not done yet. So this, uh, is a, th this could be a very interesting uh, study. And I hope we will have a very good results from this study. And this is well in the city uh, study. Mm. This research is to simulate the Upo's water level and salix area with RCP 8.5 scenarios. Uh, we developed several, uh, we applied several ecological engineering techniques uh, to resolve these problems. Uh, this is uh, very closely related to other study I presented earlier. So I'm gonna pass this around. And this is the uh, study I'm gonna show you last. Uh, this is very unique and interesting study because uh, all different kinds of academic fields should be involved in this study. Uh, we work together with natural scientists like ecologists, chemists, and social scientists, stakeholders for uh, this area. So uh, this area is kind of a derelict area, but we want to uh, revitalize this area. So we accept a concept of ecotourism to revolve this area. So 
We uh, use social ecological memories and ecological function and diversity of uh, reaction or multi-scale network and connectivity. And the most important one is the stewardship of uh, uh, community residents. Then they have to be active to restore these areas. So this study is done, and actually we are in the second phase of this study. Okay, let's sum up uh, my presentation with this diagram. Uh, I'm a very actively work on resilience concept, and I'm uh, considering how I can apply resilience into my design practice. So research a theme of aquatic landscape, urban, and coastal, and I, uh, I uh, separate research streams like that, and uh, research implementation could be resistance, adaptation, transformation as a comprehensive meaning of resilience. Then re through the resilient design, we can improve ecosystem service for longer and global sustainability. And this slide probably some of you may already have seen in this morning, but limited res resilience research in Asia, uh, in Asia. So we have to make a good collaboration team to improve our res I mean, resilience study and resilience science in Asia area. And I'm personally interested in coastal area and forest area and city area for resilient design. So uh, as, as soon as uh, possible if we launch and make an activation of Asia Regional Center, it could be a global resilience network. And uh, I think this symposium is a good foundation for this activity for, for the near future. And this is all my presentation. Thanks for your attention.